Hello, my name is Joey Morgan, and I did mostly everything on Doctor Who Exodus. Uh, let's see, I, um, I played the Doctor, I played Ribbentrop, I played a lot of other cameo roles. Um, let's see, I script edited, I, um, I sound designed, I put everything together, I, I promoted, I published. I think that covers everything. Uh, my name is Jacob Licklider, and I am in charge of adapting Exodus for audio. Uh, I also play Herman Vorey. Um, Exodus is was rather actually a straightforward ad adaptation uh, when talking about the book uh, because um, when J Brian, Joey, and I started this project, it was really only because of um, basically this conversation we had where uh, where Genesis we, we we both realized Genesis isn't a very good novel and. It could use some cutting, and there's probably some good stuff there. Uh, so when I went into Genesis, in terms of in terms of cutting, I knew what I wanted to cut. Whereas in Exodus, there wasn't nearly as much to be cut. Um, basically, nearly everything has made it into uh, into the audio features. Um, it has been a lot of fun. It was it was really interesting. Um taking on Doctor Who Exodus, because I knew ahead of time that it would be really hard to um, to sell the story to a lot of people. Because in a weird way, th this story kind of... What am I looking for here? Th th this story kind of does alternate history in a way where you have to make it so that, so that the bad guys win. And the bad guys in this case just happen to be Nazis, so... Yeah, the story overall is just, is just a, a tough sell to begin with. I am Art, credited as Corey Williams, and I helped with the casting of the Time Worm Exodus adaptation. It was a lot of fun being able to help with the casting. I got to hear so many different great lines and great voices for these characters from this book that we are now getting the opportunity to bring to life in a totally new format. So we really appreciate everyone who took the time to send us something because without so many willing voice actors, we wouldn't be able to do these projects at all. So uh, I want to say a big thank you to everyone, once again, who took the time to send us something. And I'd like to say one final thank you to Jacob and Joey as well for uh, giving me the opportunity to help out in these projects. They're a lot of fun, and I hope to be a part of more in the future. Hello, my name is Brian Corrigan, and in this story, Doctor Who Exodus, I play Adolf Hitler, the ultimate bad in real life and the ultimate evil in a lot of sci-fi, pop culture, pulp fiction shit. So yeah, that was, that was fun. When I initially auditioned, I, I, uh, I sent over a voice clip and Joey said, don't be afraid to go too over the top with it. I think I actually I was recovering from a sore throat at the time, so I was uh, trying not to damage my vocal cords, but I ended up having to anyway. And yeah, I suppose I suppose it was enough for him because he did cast me in the role, and you know he gave me a couple other minor roles in the story, but the, those are really here and there. Adolf Hitler is my main role in this story, and yeah, I just genuinely enjoyed being shouty and playing him. I'm not sure how much my family and uh, <laughs> my neighbors enjoyed it, but I thought it was fun. Yeah, I really did. Um, we actually had people when when we first put out the casting call who contacted us who were like, um, I don't know how comfortable I am with like doing this story. I'm interested in auditioning, but I wasn't sure like how, um, how to go about uh, doing this kind of story because yeah, it's it's pretty out there. It's it's a pretty, um, it, it's more of a risque idea for a Doctor Who story. Then of course, playing the Doctor was just one of the most difficult things I've ever done in this particular story, because God, the screaming in German just absolutely killed me. Hello, my name is Marcus Cotton, going by my YouTube handle, handle Sir Jedi Sentinel, and. I played Dr. Krieg's leader in Doctor Who Time Worm Exodus, but as the story goes on, he, it turns out Dr. Krieg's leader is really the war chief. 
an old Time Lord villain, who we have not seen since the War Games, the final second Doctor story. I was always kind of fascinated by the War Chief, because, you know, throughout the years, in, in the show, and in books, and on audio, and in the comics, several of the Time Lord villains always make reappearances. The Master, the Ronnie, the Monk. But the War Chief never did. He pretty much showed up in the War Games, and that was the last we saw of him, until Time Worm Exodus came along. Um, Terra Six is a very easy writer to read. Uh, he's, he's, he's very descriptive. Um, and very, very, which, which helps uh, quite a bit, because Exodus is a very, very controversial story. Uh, perhaps the biggest hurdle um, was, of course, casting it, because we, were, we, we didn't want people to take the piss, so to speak, out of uh, the Nazi characters, mainly because they're meant to be villains and they're meant to be scary. They're, they're not meant to be sort of uh, the sort of jokes that Nazis have occasionally become, like the, due to, you know, just sort of what happened with propaganda during World War II and then after World War II. Um, we really wanted to get to, like, the evil... Uh, heart of the regime, um, and also tell a story. Uh, we also wanted to keep part of the the biggest part of the original novel, where the doctor has to do horrible things to make sure an even worse future doesn't come out. Because um, that's really the moral: is basically the doctor has to do horrible things to make sure that the Nazis don't actually win the war. Uh, and it's, it's it's I think it's a very powerful script. Um, this was the second book published in 1991. Uh, honestly, it's really the first book to actually show that the Virgin New Adventures could at least tell a good Doctor Who story. Because um, these are very rocky days still for the Virgin books at this point. They are they, they just had their first book. Um, they're doing this arc. They don't quite know what they're doing. Uh, and it's it's a very... It's a very interesting script. Um, the cast, I think we assembled for this one and for Genesis, uh, and of course for Apocalypse, as, as I'm recording this, we have, we have um, just now really begun editing Exodus, and, I'm excited, uh, and we have our cast ready for Apocalypse, and then we're getting, we're prepping for Revelation, which is going to be the big one. Um, uh, yeah, I thought they were, I thought everyone we cast was excellent. Um, and we really didn't have to do too much uh, recasting this time around, which was an issue with Genesis because we had people drop out and because, you know, we're not doing these in a booth. Um, but yeah, I really hope it turns out well and I hope people like it. Hi, my name's Georgia Spencer and I played Ace in Doctor Who Exodus. Playing Ace is kind of harder than you think. There's a lot of lines to learn and... You would never have thought it. It's quite difficult because I um, extremely underestimated how many lines there actually were, but I tried my best to perform them and I think it turned out okay. I mean, I could have done better. <laughs> the hardest part, I think, for actually filming the lines was trying to figure out how I was supposed to say things in German for um, Exodus because it's really hard to pronounce German correctly and I've even, I've had ex former experience with Dutch but German just seems a lot harder because obviously Dutch is more like English so German is a bit harder than that. I think the adapters have done a really good job in adapting the um, Doctor Who Exodus um, stories because I think they flow really well and they just are a really nice um, you know thing to film I mean I really love the storyline and how things were set just after the world war with the rations I think Ace is a character that is very eager to learn and wants to, um, is enthusiastic about being with the Doctor and, and yeah, it was just really lovely to be a part of this project. I, I've got a real life 
trust me. With Joey, Joey and I get along very well, and in this story, Hitler is very much, well, at least in Hitler's little mind, he's very much the doctor's friend and believes the doctor is his best friend. So that's fun to play. Uh, I look forward to hearing how Joey handles it. Uh, so yeah, it was overall fun, enjoyable experience, and what more can you really ask for? Although overall, I gotta say, I think I was more uh, uh, more comfortable in this kind of Doctor role, where I was really able to channel my inner Sylvester McCoy, because I had a lot more of those shouty moments, and a lot more of those philosophical moments, uh, where he was contemplating um, what had to be done about this alternate history. So it was a really fun version of the Doctor to play, that I didn't quite get to tap into a lot with Genesis. Hi, my name is Audrey Lombardo, and I play the part of Ma Barker. I am a huge Doctor Who fan, and I also happen to be Joey's aunt, so this was a great opportunity for me to be involved in a really cool project um, that he was putting together. Um, for the part of Ma Barker, I listened to a lot of British accents, um, trying to get the Cockney accent that she had down. I think in the description of the character, they asked for an Angela Lansbury type role. So I did listen to a lot of Sweeney Todd before I set my audition in. Um, after reading the script, too, I realized that she had a really cool part in it as part of the revolution um, that was in the story. So that was a really neat role to play. But had a lot of fun with it. This is my first time doing an audio drama, but I look forward to doing hopefully more in the future. Hello, my name is Ilana Cole. I play General Strasser in Doctor Who Exodus. And it was my first voice acting job, so it was a whole new experience for me. And it was great fun, actually. Um, I, uh, well, General Strasser is um, this, well, general works for the British Freikorps and for the uh, German Reich in uh, London um, in this alternative universe where the Nazis won the Second World War and well he is um, he's at the doctor's service because uh, he thinks he's the Reichsinspektor General which is quite well high animal so yeah well until the moment he finds out that he's not the rice inspector general <laughs> well um i'm really looking forward um listening to the whole thing because well thing is as you can hear i have a german accent but obviously not as strong not as thick as general strasser's accent <laughs> which was horrible to play with well, not horrible but it was quite exhausting talking with this thick German accent because, you know, as a I study English since I'm six years old in school and it's like ah I'm visiting England every year <laughs> and for me and I try to improve my language and um, yeah because of that it was toe curling strange to talk with an accent like that and I'm looking forward to listening to the whole the, to, to the whole Doctor Who Exodus because I want to know how the other uh, actors spoke with German accents <laughs> because I think when English people talk with a German accent it sounds funny well I mean obviously my German accent was fake as well like it's like I have the feeling that many foreigners think that German talk English li like that, which isn't uh, true because, well, older people talk like that. Our younger generation, we learn English, we study English since we're in elementary school, so <laughs> we don't talk like that. But I had a feeling that General Strasser, he would talk like that because he's German and back then, um, obviously, they talk different, so... I had the feeling to act, to uh, speak with a very thick German accent, and yeah, it was fun, and um, I would love to meet uh, the other cast members. It was nice, nice time, and I hope you had fun listening to Doctor Who Exodus. Hello, I'm Dylan Heath, and I play Martin Borman. 
This is my friends making the series, uh, Joey, Brian and Jacob, and they're doing an amazing job, and they offered me a part in it, and I was very excited to do this, and they gave me a few options for this particular episode, and I chose Martin Borman. As somebody who's very into their history, very into their World War II history, I know a lot about the kind of Hitler's inner circle, and Borman's a very interesting figure. Uh, with how he's not an early adopter of Hitler like most of his inner circle, he's somebody who kind of came along later when Hitler was already getting power, and he kind of acted as Hitler's uh, right-hand man, and he could keep others out of the inner circle, and he's quite brutish, he's very devious, and he's actually one of the few people in Hitler's inner circle which stick to him right to the end. He, uh, you know, dies being one of Hitler's top men at that point. He finally reaches the top of the pile after, after even, like, Himmler, has left Hitler, so he's a very interesting figure, and I thought it would be very interesting to play, especially in this story where it's about an alternate universe. One of my concerns playing the role is, you know, looking at the lines, looking at the script, and looking at the character himself is, he is very similar to the Master, and I wanted to make sure that the character of the War Chief was as distanced from the Master as possible. My name is Tim Lombardo, and I play Albert Spear. I didn't have a lot of time, uh, so I chose to go for a role that didn't have a lot of lines, but I still wanted to be involved with this project. Joseph Morgan is my nephew, and I support his love of Doctor Who and him doing these projects, so uh, this was uh, a great opportunity for me to be involved. I had to learn a German accent, uh, so I watched many YouTube videos to try to get it down. Uh, it was actually a lot of fun trying to figure out how to do this, and I ended up most takes doing a French accent uh, more than a German accent, so I went more of the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger Austrian accent uh, to try to fit the role. I will say that uh, this has been an amazing experience and uh, I hope to audition for more, more roles in the future. It's kind of weird to think about recording this behind the scenes right now and, and putting out the story right now because of how long ago the script was written. Um, the initial rough draft of the script was written, I think, in February of 2018. Um, and, and that's just kind of weird for me to think about because it's uh, it seems like it's been a long journey, but we're always just kind of hard at work that we don't realize how long it's been since we've actually kind of started production on a project. Um, if Apocalypse comes out when it's supposed to, then like it'll definitely be in production for over a year. Because that script was written, I think, either really late February or early March, something like that. So, um, so yeah, it's really weird. But now that we're actually making this, it's it's really great to see it all come together. And and, and only in retrospect does it seem like we've been doing it for such a long time. But we're just always so busy with this that um, that it just doesn't seem as long. <laughs> we're working on so many other adaptation related things right now that um, that we just kind of lost track of of how long it's actually been since we started this. I also wanted to make sure because he didn't exactly regenerate, which is explained in the story, that while I did technically play a different incarnation, I was trying to stay close to what Edward Brayshaw did in the War Games, as well as putting my own twist on it. I think that's the success of playing a Time Lord who has just regenerated. You know, you honor and embody what the actors who played the role before you did while bringing your own flavor to the role. I thought this was a wonderful script with an interesting story, you know. We, we get a lot of stories in Doctor Who about villains wanting to rewrite or undo history, but from what I've seen, it's never been to this scale, and, you know, none of them have ever succeeded. When this story starts off, the War Chief has already won. This was an absolutely fantastic script, fantastic story, and I hope you enjoyed me, and honestly, I hope you enjoyed this entire production, because just 
everyone worked so hard on it, and it was just really amazing. Hello, my name is Andrew Oliveira, and I play the caretaker in Doctor Who Exodus. Well, working in this project was a great experience, because I never did that before, I never played a character. I, I, I never knew if I could, <laughs> and when I... When I, when Joey sent me the email saying that I was in the cast, Jesus, I, I, I got really excited. Because even though that my character hasn't the greatest story in the, in the, in the, in the plot, I got excited because, as I said, I, I never worked in that before. And just, it was amazing working with these people from other countries. Cause English is not my main language. I speak Portuguese in Brazil, and it was amazing knowing that people are understanding me. <laughs> I just love it. I love it. I love it. I I want to do this more in new projects. This also being the first story that I kind of helmed uh, as lead of production. Uh, was was kind of daunting to begin with. Uh, I got some practice on Doctor Who Genesis when uh, uh, when Brian needed some help with putting lines together, and then uh, and then afterward I got into the editing process. I was helping him edit some of the last couple scenes in part three. So some of that actually is my work, but I think it blends really nice and seamlessly together. So once I was more into that, it, it made me a bit more comfortable with the idea of taking over the project, um, which I think ended up working really nicely in this story. And yeah, um, it's just been an absolute pleasure uh, working on Exodus, one of my favorite Doctor Who novels that I think uh, we, I hope we've at least uh, done justice for, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Yeah, so I, I think that about does it. Um, bye. <laughs>